guys, it's Jackie from Jackie's Lost Animal Call, and it is Top 5 Wednesday time. Top 5 Wednesday is a group, is a Goodreads group created by Ginger Reads Laney and Sam from Thoughts and Tomes, and is currently hosted by Sam from Thoughts and Tomes. And I will post the link to the Goodreads group on this video, on the Dropbox below. So this week's topic is your Top 5 Auto Buy Science Fiction and Fantasy Author. Offer. Oh, I can never say that word. I don't know. I guess it comes back to the, goes back to the whole. Sometimes I would get my F's and THs mixed up, even though author or starts with an A. You know, there is a TH in there. But when I was a little kid, I could never get those. I would always get those two mixed up. Okay, so here are my top five sci-fi fantasy authors mostly fantasy i don't know if i have well i have one author that does write a little bit of sci-fi well maybe two but anyway this is in no particular order this is just the ones that came to my mind that i really like that i really have gotten into over the years okay so the first one is sarah j mass sarah so far sarah j mass writes a lot of fan, fairy type fantasy stories um, although she did write the Catwoman book, and that's not fairies, obviously. I haven't read that one yet, but I do want to read that one. I mean, I'm definitely interested in that series of books, because I liked, I do like the DC superheroes. And I don't read comics or graphic novels that much. I mean, I have a few here at my house, but, so that's how I usually find out. And it's just about from movies and stuff. And it's almost easier to read an actual physical novel, a book, rather than a graphic novel. Because I've always been, I've always read those. I've never read comic books before, so it's hard for me to get into them because they cost as much as a book, usually. Or at least the graphic novels do. And then if you want to continue the story, you have to buy a whole bunch of them if you're going to, especially if you get the comic books instead of the graphic novels. So it's just easier for me to buy a book. So I definitely want to read I want to read her Catwoman and the other authors that write you know, the other, all the other DC stories about the other DC characters, superheroes. Um, well, the Catwoman's not technically a superhero. But anyway, Sarah, but she, Sarah J. Mass, I, yeah, now I know she's a problematic author because there's things like people talking about how she's not a very diverse author, and there are some people who don't get the appeal of Sarah J. Mass, which is okay, you know, it's your opinion. But I am a fan, you know? I mean, although currently I'm struggling with Queen of Shadows, and I still haven't come back to reading that. But that's more of because, not that it's badly, it's a great book. It's just, I am a Kale fan, and things are not going well for Kale. And I don't like how Kale and Selena are not getting along right now. They're hating on each other. So I'm struggling with that one because I am a can't team Kale. But anyway, um... But yeah, Sarah J. Mess is such an awesome writer. I love, I can use, I can usually see what's going on. I love the world that she's created. She's a great at build, world building. And I love her take on fairies. And she's the inspiration for a lot of my own, the novel I want to write myself one day. But of course, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Knock on wood, don't want to jinx myself. Okay, so Sarah J. Mess. Oh, and um, in case you haven't, she's the one who writes Throne of Cl the Throne of Glass series and the Akatar series, A Court of Thorns and Roses being the first book in that series. Okay, so next, I haven't read a lot of this author's books, but I'm really getting into her work, and I think she's going to become an autobi author. Um, and that is Victoria. Or V. E. Schwab. V. Schwab, uh, she writes, that's where she, that's, if she's under that name, then I think it's her adult fantasy. And if it's under Victoria Schwab, it is her YA. And I do want to read um, some of her YA books, like This Savage Song, um, the sequel to that one, Our Dark Duet. Um, the Archived. I want to read that one. But right now, all I've read is The Darker Shade of Magic, Vicious, and um, A Gathering of Shadows. And I'm really loving those books. I love her writing style. It's very easy to get into. And it's very well, it's well paced. 
It's not drying down. It's fast, but not too fast as far as pacing. And I just love the world that she creates. And I want to, and like I said, I want to read her YA as well. And I, I, um, she's just, I, she's definitely becoming an, an author that I really am getting into and I want to read more of her books. Okay, so next, I have another author who I'm still, like, I'm still slowly getting into more. And that is Marissa Meyer. Yeah, Marissa Meyer. She read, and she is the one who read the Lunar Chronicles, which I fell in love with that series. I just love that series. I love the mixture of fairy tale retellings and science fiction. Now, I'm not a huge science fiction fan because sometimes it's hard for me to get into it because all the science-y aspects of it kind of bore me and I don't always understand it. But if it's science that I can understand and it's kind of simplified and not necessarily dumbed down, but made a little easier for a layman's person to understand someone that doesn't study science. Like low 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 brow science fiction. That's what I can get into. And I really love and I loved Heartless. Heartless is awesome. It's and I want to continue and I I actually have Wires Nerve graphic novel on my list that I sent to my friend. Um as because she, you know, I try not to send tell my friend what I want, but then she always asks me like around. Um, she always asks me, so I send her. So this time I did. So I did send her a list. I emailed it to her, and that one is actually on the list. The wires and nerve graphic novel. And I just, I really, I'm enjoying. You know, I really am enjoying her books and I think she will again is another author that I will continue to buy more books for I love again I love her I love the writing style it's easy to follow and to get into to get lost in the, the worlds that she created although she didn't take well well yeah I guess she created her own version of Wonderland and Heartless but she you know was inspired by the original um Lewis Carroll story this Heartless is actually an origin story of the Queen of Hearts. Okay, so the next author I have here is... Now, I don't know if... I feel like I can't entirely count this author because there are at least a few of his books that I don't know if I'll ever read, like The Cell. Read the back of that one. I don't know if I will ever read that one. Um, and Stephen, this... Uh, the author I'm talking about Stephen King. And he's also... Stephen King is also one of those authors who doesn't just stick with sci-fi and fantasy. He writes, he also writes, um, horror, he writes horror. But sometimes horror can involve the supernatural, can involve fantasy and science fiction. Like, you know, the, my favorite of his, one of my favorites of his is It. And, you know, we're dealing with not a regular person that's killing children, but it's, a demonic entity from another world that takes on the physical form of different things that you fear, especially the clown. Um, and then there's Salem's Law, which is about vampires. I have started The Eyes of the Dragon, which I just realized it is a library book. So I guess my dad got it in a library so a library so I mean first I thought he stole it. I jokingly teased him and said he stole it, but I think now, years later, I think he got it from the, he bought it from the library, like it was at a library sale. Let's see here. I'm trying to think of what Carrie deals with a girl with telekinetic powers, so that's kind of supernatural. Um, let's see. We have the Dark Tower series, which is his epic fantasy series. Um, let's see. What else does he write? Um, I guess the Dreamcatcher, which I did not actually read, but from reading the back of it. The back description, or the inside flap description, I should say, because the one I saw was hardback. That kind of deals with a little bit of a supernatural element. So he write, he does write, like, yeah, he writes, um, The Dark Half kind of is a, Misery is one of his horror novels that isn't, doesn't have supernatural element in it. Um, but The Dark Half kind of does because it's like his, 
the the character the character that the author in the story created comes to life. So that's kind of supernatural when he's like an alter ego of the author that Stephen King is has created. If that makes any sense. Um, the Shining deals with ghost, so that's supernatural. So he writes, oh, he does write quite a bit of supernatural. Even if he mostly writes horror, a lot of his horror have to deal with supernatural things. But he also writes horror that doesn't have to do with supernatural things. And he writes, and he has a, a handful of stories that aren't supernatural at all, but are just, just deal with life, like Stand By Me. Um, so yeah, I, so yeah, I think I can include Stephen King. Because mostly, I do want to read most of his books, but there might be a few that I'm just not interested in. So I guess he's not technically an autobiographer. I don't know. Well, I guess it doesn't matter, because it's up to me. So Stephen King, like I said, he mostly writes horror, but he's just, he's so, so good. And he writes a lot of character-driven stories, and there is a lot, he writes a lot of details in his books. Um, but, yeah, and he even writes screenplays, too. Um, but anyway, so that's the other one. And then the final author that I have on here is Cassandra Clare. Now, I was reluctant to put her on. I wasn't sure if I should put her on here or not. Kind of for the same reason that... I didn't put George R. R. Martin on there because I have done, I've only read Cassandra Clare's Shadowhunters books. She has not written anything else. To be fair, so she hasn't gone beyond the Shadowhunter world. But I do really like her writing style, and her books are so easy to get into. And I love the Shadowhunter world, and you know it brings me back to my old love for paranormal that I used to have. Because I feel like it's still kind of urban fantasy paranormal. Well, I guess it's more urban fantasy than paranormal. But, yeah, I still love it. I mean, it's not perfect. She's not a perfect author. And, yeah, I mean, maybe the first series wasn't the best series. But she, ha I've been told multiple times that she has gotten better as an author with some of her new series. Like, she has two new series that are coming out. One of them, she's still working on the last book. And that's The Dark Artifices, I think. I think that's what it's called. And then she's going to write another series. Another trilogy. Possibly. I don't know if it's a trilogy or going to be a series. But yeah, I really enjoy her books. Like I said, they're not perfect. She's not a perfect author. But I don't look... I don't want perfect. I mean, people are constantly... I mean, okay, diversity-wise, I get that. You know, it's important to be more diverse as an author. And so that fine, but some of the criticisms I don't get, but that's just me. Diversity I get. That criticism I get. You know, like yeah, it's important for Sarah J. Mass does need to be more diverse in her writing. That is important. But some of the criticisms that, that an author has, authors are not who wants a book that has every single thing that's you know, that is important to a reader. They can't plead. I mean, I know normally I don't like this expression because I feel like sometimes people just use this as an, as an excuse to make up for the fact that they that they haven't been able to please most of their fans. And I'm an Eddie. <clears throat> but um, you can't please everybody. Like I said, I don't like that phrase normally, but in this case, I do say it's hard to please all the fans and include everything that shows that you're trying to please everybody, that you're trying to do this and you're trying to do that. I think you need to take it one step at a time. And just focus on, you know, as you're continuing to write and try to get continue to be a better writer. And just, and like I said, focus, I feel like people should, authors should focus more on diversity than anything, which I think they do. I mean, we have a lot more authors coming up with books that are set in different, you know, not just European inspired fantasy, but um, we have the Grisha trilogy is kind of which acts which okay is technically European, but it's a little different. It's not like the UK. It's Russian folklore inspired, and then 
Children of Blood and Bone. That's West Af I think it's West African, and I do want to read that one. I just haven't got around to it yet, <laughs> but I do want to check it out. Um, but anyway, I'm getting off topic here. So, so yeah, those are the five the five fantasy sci-fi fantasy authors that I um that I are auto by. Like I said, I include Stephen King on this, although they're like. Um, even though there are some of his books that I don't know if I would be interested in or not. But so far, I've liked what Stephen King writes. So, what, who are your auto-buy fantasy and sci-fi authors? Be sh please share the comics be comments below. Unless you decide to do this top five Wednesday topic, then just share them with me um, what you put for your top five. And I will talk to you guys later, and if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Alright, love you guys.